And joining us now is White House Communications Director Kate Bedingfield. Hey, Kate, thanks for being with us. So arguably, this has been a very good week. You've had a, a great week legislatively. Gas prices are inching down, uh, even though core inflation is still a problem. Uh, do you think that this could add up to a better outlook for the Democrats in the midterms? Well, I think you're right. It's been a very good week for President Biden and the Democrats, but it's also been a good week for American families. I mean, we are uh, on the cusp of passing the Inflation Reduction Act and having it come to the president's desk. It's going to lower energy costs. It's going to lower health care costs. It's going to ensure that Medicare, excuse me, that Medicare can negotiate uh, for the lowest prescription drug prices, which is something that uh, people have wanted and that we've been trying to get done in Washington for decades. And now as a result of President Biden's leadership and work with the congressional Democrats, we're on the cusp of getting that done. So that, in addition to what we're seeing economically, a month where uh, we had 0% inflation this month, this month, 500,000 jobs. So we're seeing jobs up, costs coming down. Uh, so President Biden's economic agenda is working, and you're going to hear the president and the administration out talking about that uh, over the coming months. Of course, no fault of yours, but the overwhelming story this week was the search warrant and the raid at the former president's house at Mar-a-Lago. So you didn't get as much coverage as you might have liked in the news media. And the president, of course, in the previous week was, you know, isolated with COVID. So you had a couple of bad breaks. He still has historically low polls. And that is dragging down Democrats uh, in a lot of these races. Um, how do you counteract that? First of all, even as the president was isolated with COVID, he was out and people were seeing him. You know, we mm -hmm. learned through a very non-traditional campaign in 2020 uh, that even when you have to be in isolation, there are still ways to communicate. There's still ways to reach people. And so uh, the president was out during that time, uh, frankly, continuing to rack up wins. So, uh, so uh, you know, what we're going to do is continue to have the president out making the case you know, a lot of these things that we're seeing uh, Congress pass in these last couple of weeks are things the president campaigned on. They're things he's been talking about. He's been making a case to the American people since uh, 2019, and in some cases even earlier, that we need to do this. And now we're on the cusp of these historic uh, steps forward to tackle the climate crisis and, again, to bring down costs, to address the things that people are worried about around their kitchen table. So, you know, we're going to continue to be out there. You're going to continue to hear from the president. You know, and you mentioned Trump. You know, the other thing I would say, of course, the Department of Justice is entirely independent from the White House, as it should be. Um, you know, but I would also note that uh, President Biden has never shied away from talking about uh, the existential threat that he believes that uh, that Donald Trump, that January 6th and that extremist, uh, the extremist Republican agenda poses to the country. So you're going to continue to hear from him on that, uh, as you have from the outset. Well, and in fact, I think there's an anniversary of that you know, horrific march in Charlottesville. Uh, which was, he said, the reason why he decided to run. That's exactly right. Uh, the soul, saving the soul of the nation. And according to the Washington Post, he had an off-the-record dinner with historians, which presidents do, presidents other than Mr. Trump, and uh, that they warned him um, more, you know, more seriously than they ever had before, that they felt, as a group, several of them felt that the future of the country is at stake right now. How does the president feel about that? Well, as you said, Andrea, it was that march in Charlottesville, that awful march uh, in August a few summers ago, that really catalyzed him to get into the race. And he uh, believes truly that we are in a battle for the soul of this nation. And so he's always tried to tried to engage uh, historians throughout uh, throughout this presidency. Uh, he's done a couple of these meetings. Uh, he wants to hear. He wants to hear perspective on you know where our country's been in the past in at moments of great inflection like this. Um, there's no question that you know our our rights are at risk. Uh, you know what we see is an extremist agenda again from uh, congressional Republicans who are looking to take away rights all across the country. Uh, and and uh, what the president is doing is putting forward an agenda that's focused on. Uh, on protecting those rights, on protecting uh, right to women's health care, protecting our democracy, and simultaneously bringing down costs, focusing on those kitchen table issues. You know, this is something that uh, the president uh, is extremely focused on. We're, again, on the cusp of a, of a historic victory, uh, which comes uh, on, on top of continuing good news on gas prices coming down faster than they have uh, at any point in a decade, I believe over a dollar a gallon uh, over the last few weeks. So what we're continuing to see is President Biden make good progress on the economic agenda, but also uh, to continue to advance an agenda that's going to protect your rights uh, and that's going to protect our democracy.